we are recording and I am pushing the confirm and go live button. And we're live. Welcome to uh, Howard Taylor's Drafting Table, Big Dumb Cover Art 3. Uh, today we are taking, oh my goodness, what is this sitting, sitting right here on my table? What in my, uh, uh, what, what am I looking at that's in between me and the artwork? Well, it is a spaceship toy. <coughs> Excuse me. Spaceship toy from Jeff Zagal of uh, starshipright.com. This is the Kite Sphere. And I, I got to tell you, this is absolutely going to get used by me as a model I hold up when I am trying to figure out what angle to draw the ship from. Absolutely going to get used as an art reference. Um, let's, uh, let's set this up and see if I can find a way to set it so that I can show it off. Um, okay, Big Dumb Cover Art 3. There's our title placard. Done with that. The project. The project now is to take uh, to take some of these foreground things and add add some energy to what's going on. Um, maybe do a little bit of uh, uh, maybe do a little bit of cleanup because there's a whole bunch of things in here that need cleanup. But uh, I usually wait on that until after I've. Uh, after I finalized some of the other lines. I just realized I'm wearing the wrong pair of glasses. Hang on a moment. Ah, much better. Much better. Okay. Um, by the way, uh, viewers in chat, um, feel free to ask questions. Uh, hello, Dominios. Good evening to you as well. Uh, feel free to ask questions. I shall endeavor to uh, answer them as I look up from the from the making of the art. Um, And yes, that is that is the kite sphere. It is not the synthetic certainty because it doesn't have the uh, it doesn't have the great big shoulder cannon um, made by uh, whoa. Now it's on the floor. <laughs> made by Jeff Zoll of uh, StarshipRight.com. Um, it is uh, <laughs> it is it is super cool. It is super cool. I'm, I'm position it so that it's less likely to uh, less likely to fall on the floor. Um, all right. Um, I think I'm it is best if I start on the left hand side of the page because I am less likely to track ink everywhere with the heel of my hand. Um, they, they, do make, they do make gloves for that. Um, I'm not currently wearing one. Because I don't own one. Just finalizing, finalizing some of these lines. This is uh, an Esperaran Sashiko, the uh, the mech snake thing that the uh, Espies 
use part of what happens with uh, with comic covers is that um, part of what happens with book covers in general uh, and with comic book covers it always feels a little uh, a little weird when it happens um, is that the illustration on the cover may end up off model from the illustrations that are inside the book. Uh, yes, you may notice that I am inking straight over some of what I uh, some of what I drew of Sergeant Schlock. Um, that would be because at the time I drew him here, I did not know. that I was going to be uh, I was going to be adding uh, a sashiko tail. Um, I have a big pen full of white ink that I use for exactly these kinds of occasions. I've shown it off before. Let's, uh, where did I put it? There's the white. I'm going to go ahead and add and do that little bit of line cleanup right now because if I don't, it'll confuse me. Got to remove Sergeant Schlock's outline from this piece of the picture. nice thing about working in black and white is that while you can clearly see those fixes, they're going to be absolutely invisible um, when I get around to when I get around to scanning this. Um, I hadn't given enough thought to the architecture of the upper part of that tail. Let's, uh, think I was planning on doing some sort of join some sort of ring thingy that connects it to other stuff. Yes, Rentier, is, is it Rentier, Rentier 7419? Today we do, in point of audible fact, have sound. I'm uh, pleased that the solution to the where the heck did the sound go uh, problem was reboot my machine. I mean, I'm never excited when something didn't work until I rebooted, but I like when the solution is simple. Okay. So, we have... We have...
have something crossing through the foreground. Nice. Yep. Yep. I, I worked I worked tech support for several years and the turn it off and turn it back on again solution was altogether too common. Um, we particularly disliked it in my organization because the systems that we were dealing with were uh, corporate messaging servers, collaboration, uh, collaboration software and turning the server off and then on again uh, is uh, not a thing not, not a thing that our customers wanted to be told was uh, going to solve their problem this was in the uh, mid to early 90s uh or mid to early mid to late 90s uh early 2000s um and and uptime uh even then we recognized that uh uh uptime was was everything and not being able to offer fantastic uptime to our customers was uh, going to result in them becoming someone else's customers. I have lots of scribbles in place under Captain Landon's arm telling me about where things should go. Anyway, in terms of going uh, going off model, which is a thing that always 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 happens, always happens um, with cover art. Uh, in comics, let me rewind. The cover art does not exist to tell you what pictures are in the book. Cover art exists to sell you the book. And that means often you will have a cover like this one, which is depicting a scene that never happened. It's a it's a composite, it's a uh, it's an amalgam of scenes. Uh, and it's it's establishing for the viewer, for the reader, for the potential customer, what kinds of things might be in the book, so that they can get excited about uh, about purchasing it. When you see uh, science fiction book covers, science fiction and fantasy book covers, uh, especially these magical things done by guys like uh, Dan De Los Santos or you know, legends like Michael Whelan or um, Boris Vallejo. Um, uh, the, the cover art is evocative. It's, it's stuff that uh, 
that purely exists to evoke, and yet uh, it's also these guys, you know, Whalen, Vallejo, uh, Dandel, Los Santos, um, do a fantastic job of being as on model as possible. Um, uh, I think it was Dandel, Los Santos did the cover for um, uh, Terminal Alliance by Jim Hines and that cover has janitors in space standing on a piece of floating space rock and the the characters themselves are absolutely on model but there is no point in that book where the characters are standing on a floating bit of space rock so this I am allowing myself to redesign, redesign is the wrong word, ignore the existing design for uh, Captain Landon's, um, uh, Captain Landon's armor, for the uh, Sashiko, um, uh, the, the Sashiko designs, you know, this, this guy. Uh, I just, I need to get it close enough that readers know what the pieces are and then um, and then I just need to have it look cool. One of the tags I used on this uh, uh, on this stream was AMA. Ask me anything. If you have questions you'd like to ask, I'm here for them. Um, I'm going to take just a moment to. Uh, can I do that from here? Hmm. <laughs> If I move, I disappear from the camera, and so I can't quite reach the thing. And shift S. And yep, there's a great picture of my butt. I'm not going to use that one. I was going to post a screenshot to Twitter so that uh, I could further publicize. Um, but uh, yeah, I should be drawing, not uh, not publicizing. Okay, this mess here now needs now needs line weight, and it needs line weight before I do the part where I dig into what's going on in the background. Um, uh, line weight for those who are new to the conversation is the part where I just make some of the lines fatter and and part of what line weight accomplishes you can see you know how heavy uh, Tagon's lines are part of what line weight accomplishes is volume and shadow and part of what it accomplishes is uh, uh, foreground foreground versus background you know, before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and clean up this garbage because it looks terrible. I'm tired of staring at it. Tired of staring at it. Okay. Um, Chaos Adventurer asks, when is the glitter beard planned for? I have an appointment with um, my friend Meg. Uh, they are coming over on Monday. Yeah, dropped my pen. They're coming over on Monday and uh, and we'll see if we get enough uh, enough retweets. Oh, Dominios, I'm sorry to lose you. I realize that uh, uh, I'm not doing this on the uh, on 
schedule that's friendly for European viewers. Um, let's see where there's another question in there. Uh, Rentier7419 um, asks if this is a kite sphere. This is a kite sphere. I've said this a couple of times now. Uh, Jeff Zagal made this uh, fancy, awesome spaceship. And you know what? I should take, I should take just a moment and, oh, paper, paper. Grab one of the cards that I use for typecast. Grab a colored marker. Is that going to sit? Eh, should have left more room for an arrow. Magnet. Got it. Awesome. Tiny. Not teeny tiny. I mean it, it fits in the it fits in the palm of the hand. It's just right for for holding it and going only this wouldn't go because the Annie plant is uh, generating a gravitational field, so the ship is just sort of falling forward when it falls. When it flies, it flies by falling. Bouncy castle uh, cinder cone. Um, okay, cinder cone is eight kilometers. This is uh, sixty millimeters. Um, so we we this is sixty millimeters. And the scale on kite sphere, uh, kite sphere is uh, 60 meters long. So multiply by a thousand, um, uh, multiply by a th I can't do the math. 60 meters is 60 millimeters. So a thousand meters would be a meter. And eight thousand meters would be eight meters. So yeah, eight meters. That's that's bouncy house size. I think that's bouncy house size. All right, back back to work. Gotta scoot my magnets out of the way so I don't whack them into my lap.
to remember that the camera can't see it if I uh, reach all the way up there. So who else has who else has questions? Ask me anything. Excellent question. Uh, Polarin is asking, why do computers never work? The answer, unfortunately, is computers don't never work. Um, they sometimes don't work, and I totally get the grumpy. A, uh, a more telling question, and I'm all about learning to ask the right questions. Uh, a more telling question would be, why does my computer wait until I am at my most easily frustrated before failing? I don't have the answer to that question. Uh, King and Commoner, is there a reason you chose the kite sphere for the toy, or was it mostly because it was first? Um, Honestly, Jeff, uh, Jeff chose it, and I, uh, I, I think he picked well. Um, I need to fix Sergeant Schlock's hand to show that he is definitely touching. Captain Landon, and I need to put the red pen away. So much white out. So much white out will be required before this is done. I love this tool. It is essentially an eraser on a stick. And it's a square eraser, which makes it easier to get into spaces and do things. You'll notice, possibly, when I erase, that uh, some of the ink comes up, um, which uh, argues well for me to leave as much of this stuff, the, the blue pencil, on the page as I can so that I don't have to go over all of my, uh, 
all of my black lines and restore them to their glorious original blackness. What kind of post-processing do you use once you scan, uh, Polarin asks. Um, I scan in black and white, so at the, there's no post-processing required in order to get... That focus is bouncing back and forth. Hang on just a moment. Let me see if I can make that stop happening. because I should have done that. Camera control, focus, stop attempting to autofocus. Okay, we, we working again? Is this, uh, this looking the way it's supposed to look? Of course, it means that now when I hold the spaceship up to the camera, the spaceship will Go in and out. I don't even know why it was bothering to autofocus. That particular focus setting seems to be lovely. I'm just going to leave it alone. Um, uh, I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? Oh, uh, what, what kind of post-processing? I scan in black and white. I just tell the scanner, um, ignore, ignore color information, just, just go black and white. And the blue lines completely disappear, uh, as does the whiteout and, and a lot of these other little distinctions. Um, looking up the camera, I saw a great big question from Sergeant Medicine. What kind of grasp do civilizations in the Schlock universe have on strong and weak nuclear forces? I recently finished the Three Body Problem trilogy and it opened up whole new ways of looking at the direction future technology could go. Um, that sounds like a question not fully qualified to answer beyond saying that the shielding that they use the and the the anti plants um, uh, early on in the strip I refer to it as uh, unifield uh, unifield uh, shielding powering whatever which was a play on unified field theory, uh, which in turn suggests that they just know how all of it works. Okay. Uh, King and Commoner, true black and white or grayscale? True black and white. True black and white, 600 dots per inch. Um, yes, that means if you zoom in, there is information being lost as uh, edges become slightly pixelated. But when you are when you're coloring these things, having a fuzzy gray edge that you need to the, the fuzzy gray edges are terrible um fuzzy gray edges are Okay, next up, um, 
I'm going to clean up Sergeant Schlock's eyeballs a little bit because I'm not happy with the way they're currently looking. And that, oh, I'm going to have to lean way in in order to see this. They just, they got a little gritchy as the, the ink moved in directions I wasn't expecting it to move. These, these glasses are uh, bifocals. Wow, that does a weird thing to my nose. Uh, these glasses are bifocals that are designed so that the long focal length is really only only about, you know, a, a meter. Um, and the short focal length is, uh, works well when I've got things just right up in my face. Um, in the right light with these glasses on, I can watch the ink bleed into the pores on the page. It's, it's glorious. It, it, it's glorious. Um, when I first got these glasses, uh, one of the very first shows I did was uh, uh, Westercon in um, Salt Lake City, and there was a display of uh, of there was an art show. It's well, words not coming easily. There was an art show, and one of the things in the art show was a convention magazine cover um, for, uh, for a sci-fi convention in Seattle. I don't know if it was Emerald City Comic Con. I think it predated uh, Emerald City Comic Con. And it was the original, which had been done in black and white, and and there was a mixture of black paint and white paint and black paint on the white paint and tiny bits of white detail paint atop the black, atop the white, atop the black. Um, and it had been used to render, among other things, uh, some curl, cool um, uh, uh, warp drive effects, you know, blobbity bits, uh, energy, bl blobbity energy bits uh, coming out of the uh, nacelles of uh, the uh, classic Starship Enterprise. And I looked at that and was astounded at, uh, at how much had been done just in black and white. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I switched from my walk around the convention glasses to my bifocals and was able to get right, right up close, right up close to the piece. And from, uh, from the distance I was able to get, um, I could see the order in which the paints went down. And it was, it was so wonderfully, so wonderfully educational. I, I, I loved that. I learned, I learned so, so very, very much because I could see, I, I could see the way the ink, the way the ink had bled into the page and the way the white had, had, had surfacted across the inks and the way the black had bled into the white. It was, it was cool. And I know I'm nerding out over, over things that other people probably don't care much for or about, but it was so neat. It was so neat. All right, this part is ready for shading, but I don't want to do any of the shading, any of the deep, deep black areas until I've got more of the picture down. Um, uh, and I said I was supposed to start over here. At this point, what's going on over here 
starts to fall further and further back and there were more things that I need to compose in here that are not composed yet. Um, I Sorry, I just I saw a thing and realized I need to actually clear up some of this for myself. Part of what's in here is Chizulo. And I need whoops. Okay. My pencil lead just spun around, which means it's uh-oh. <gasps> for more lead. Okay, it's it's cute seeing the uh, 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 the the up arrow of that. That, that, all the that. Yeah. Adorables. Okay. And we have a lead again. Nice. And I need to throw Chizulo's ear all the way across that energy beam because that's what will help us communicate some scale of these things. All right, I've got his ear in the wrong place. Because his eyes are not going to be visible. We are looking down at the top of his head. So ear moves. This way. Get rid of those lines, get rid of the point on the ear, push this ear back. So we break the symmetry of the ears, it adds a lot more action. The, uh, and one of the biggest mistakes I ever made was making Chizulo proud of his natural tusks because boy if I had it to do over over I would just give him tusk nubbins because getting these things in the right places is miserable anyway as I was saying having having uh, the ears flapping asymmetric uh, adds adds some energy to what is happening that's all right. Let's give a center line. I got to give myself a construction line here, or I'm going to keep putting things in the wrong place. Tusk. Tusk. Trunk. And let's see. We have a long thing here. I could push his trunk up this way, but I think that would feel weird. I think I want his trunk. I think I want it coming back this way. I hear sounds in the house behind me suggesting that uh, other people are home. look over my shoulder. Hey Aiden. Yes, I am streaming. So okay. Zulo's face. Good. We've got a little face in the background. Um uh yeah. Polarin says, ha! Forced perspective on curved objects. <sighs> ha indeed. Ha indeed. Um, okay, and now, uh, what 
I was going to do with him. I think I think it was going to be the the one hand down, one hand up. You know, the big superhero punch when I did that. I disappeared from the screen. You know that thing. Um, question is, do I want this one to be the one that's up? And I think if this one is up, it vanishes behind the bomb. So it is this one, which puts it behind the energy bolt. And I don't think I want it straight up. And it's not going to be very detailed. It's just going to be sort of a arm nubbin at this point. And that means that his other arm is coming down and this way. And this leg is probably forward. that and his other leg is behind him and that is a reasonable approximation for the volume that Jula is going to be uh, going to be taking up in that page what is he focusing on well he's focusing on something that is here ish He's probably got his hand on it. And I bet it's a Sashiko head. The Sashiko head is almost as large as a Chizulo head. If he's holding that bit, then that means the rest of the Soshiko is trailing off this way. Okay, there's my there's my edge, there's my ground. And I need to have the Chizulo contacting the ground in some way. And then the tail can drop back off the edge so I don't have to draw as much of it. Okay. Um, I truly enjoy watching other people that know what they're doing do their jobs. I like that too. I'm flattered that you have categorized me that way. I hope that's what you're saying. Um, <laughs> uh, woodworking streams on Twitch. Yeah, I bet those are neat. I bet those are really neat. Um, and yes, Bob Ross, Bob Ross was a magician. Um, magician is the wrong word. I think Bob Ross, I think Bob Ross was, was somewhere between a sorcerer and a cleric because, because he really did heal a lot of us. Um, okay. That got mushy. Um, I, I have taken care of the business that needed to be taken care of over here. What is that? I think that was an early suggestion of where I was putting Chizulo's hand. And that is now completely incorrect. So let's make some of those lines go away. I also have some lines suggesting that Chizulo was going to be quite a bit bigger. And then we've got a gun blast here, which I need to make muzzle flash space for. And remove the center line. Okay. Okay, um, here next. 
Gotta go here next. Now, in order for this to work, I need it, we need to establish where the, where the texture of the floor is. Sort of grid this out a little bit. Yes, I'm, I'm eyeballing it. Um, yes, Tagon is absolutely absolutely airborne and if there were light coming directly from above I think his shadow would be about here um, okay and so I need to take this spirit spear it into the pavement and into what it surface is to show relative proximity to Tagon because this is trying to stab him. Let's put a fun little hollow curve in the blade. Let's Those clicky, crunchy noises are my leads breaking because I push just a little too hard. And I'm, I feel like I'm using a light touch, but man, these leads just fall apart. They just fall apart. And, and I suppose it makes sense because they're not leads at all. They're crayons. I'm, I'm drawing in, uh, in a very stiff wax. Um, and structurally, it is just not as sturdy as, uh, as a proper pencil lead would be. But a proper pencil lead would, uh, all right, that loop is not in the right place. A proper pencil lead, um, would not disappear during the scanning process. Okay, so I think in terms of the volumes of the things, I need to not have this line coincide with that line, so we're going to have to be careful with that. Um, but I think in terms of the volumes of things, the blade is in the right place. Now we'll take this rectangular guy and give him a more interesting, a more interesting shape. This a more interesting shape. It's not working for me. Not loving it. Not loving it. Not loving it. Uh, Polarin uh, suggests uh, thicker lead in lead holder. You know what? You're absolutely right. That is a that is a solution for the problem that I'm having. I've tried 0.7 millimeter uh, blue lead, and what happens is I am not I am not as happy with the line work, which uh, uh, I, I I like the I like the finer lines. The other thing is that this paper I'm drawing on is uh, pushes back hard. Um, it's I break a lot more lead on this paper than I do on this paper when I'm drawing comics. Oh my goodness! If you freeze frame and clip that, you've got a uh, spoiler for Saturday the 16th of this very month. Of this very month. Uh, hey chat, if you just showed up, 
um, we're doing uh, we're doing cover art, and by we I mean me. Um, we're doing cover art for the big dumb object uh, schlock mercenary book, um, and we're playing uh, a, a game of ask me thing because I am happy to do, happy to answer whatever questions you may have. And now I will look up and see. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, the heart buffer is, uh, is in point of actual fact that thin. Um, and that is that is an outgrowth of a number of things. I could I could talk at great length about how we got into that. Oh, sorry, just had a fun idea um, about how we got into we got into that bind. Um, a portion of it is, and this is this is a little embarrassing to admit. This book I know is going to be the last. Uh, schlock mercenary book in the epic series that has been running for 20 years um, and uh, and so my process has changed because I know that I need to I need to stick the landing I need to um, I, I need to more tightly plot my way through the rest, uh, the rest of this book. So, um, time to wrap all the loose thread threads and fire all of Gov's guns. Um, I have, I have bad news. We're not going to wrap up all of the loose threads, um, but it's also good news because one of the things that I know people will want. I know you want it. Um, you want this story to end in such a way that there is room for you to headcanon or role play or otherwise envision more stories following these characters. Um, and so part of what I am doing is figuring out which of the loose ends, which of the Chekhov's guns absolutely have to be fired, have to be tied up, have to be resolved in order for us to have a uh, satisfactory conclusion. Um, and and that is slowing down the writing a lot. Oh, so very, very much. It is slowing down the writing. Um, for the readers, at least, author can have notes. Don't choke the story space for readers. I love it. I don't think it would be possible to even find all the guns at this point. Yeah, I have notes. Um, will you ever open the art the universe for other artists to tell stories in um, depending on your definition of the word artist and your definition for the word open I already have um, planet mercenary the role-playing setting is a shared a shared storytelling uh, tool for lack of a better term, um, and I absolutely consider the things that are created by role players, by their, their the, you know, the game chiefs and the players together, I absolutely consider those things to be art. Um, and so, to one sense, in, in, uh, in, in one way of looking at things, um, we already have uh, opened it up. Um, but the question you're 
actually asking is, am I, whoops, I pushed that all the way off the screen and you can't see what I'm drawing. Um, uh, am I going to have other artists come in and draw, other artists, other writers come in and do schlock mercenary stories and get them and, and publish them on schlockmercenary.com or as, you know, books, whatever. Uh, and, and that is absolutely something we are exploring and I don't have anything to announce yet. How is that for a long lead up for a short answer? Oh boy. Symmetry on that is looking really weird even in pencils. I think it's time to erase before I attempt to uh, commit any more of this sashiko to ink. Center line is here, so little fin spike thingies are there. And I want them to be more like hair than like spines. So let's let them flow a little bit. <laughs> DJD66, it's better than leading up to a plain no. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, after book 20, do you plan on starting a new series? Um, yes, the, the we currently do have uh, do have plans for a uh, a new series yeah that's boy the symmetry I just I second guessed the way I was putting that line down and I broke it even further oh well this is one of those points where I'm just gonna hope that people don't look too closely at what I drew um, yes I have uh, I have rough outlines. There's a there. Are lots of things that I want to do. Um, the uh, Shafters Shifters project, which I began last year at this time, um, is it got backburnered for uh, the five year summer of terrible plumbing. Um, and that's definitely something I want to continue to work on. Um, the uh, the universe of uh, Flight of the Runewright, um, uh, or yeah, Flight of the Runewright, Fall of the Runewright, um, a couple of uh, uh, horror stories uh, I wrote. Um, uh, that universe I've. I've just been itching to tell more stories in there. And uh, again, I, I have outlines. I have outlines for those. Um, but they're not. Uh, they, they're further back on the burner than. Uh, uh, Shafter shifters is. I've, I've decided to go ahead and fix this line and go ahead and make this guy round. Make him look a little more like a cylinder. So much white paint. So much white paint.
the, the tool here is the Posca. Um, uh, get them. I get I get mine from JetPens. Um, JetPens.com. Uh, quick JetPens.com commercial. Um, I can spend twenty five dollars on art supplies uh, without. I was gonna say without breaking a sweat, without raising my resting heart rate. Um, I uh, I I buy lots and lots and lots and lots of pens and $25 of product through jetpens.com gets you free shipping. So Have I missed questions in chat? Um, uh, <laughs> Paul Aaron says, I love bonsai babies, definition of a master woodworker, uh, someone who knows how to hide all of their mistakes. Um, that is probably a good definition for a uh, master in almost any craft. Um, all right. I've reached the point where I'm sitting like this and trying to figure out which piece comes next. And I think Part of what needs to come next is fixing the front of the bomb. Okay, fine. I can see you guys right there saying, Howard, don't you have straight edges for this kind of thing? The answer is, well, yeah, of course I do. Why don't you use them? Well, because then I would have to reach up and take my hand off the page and maybe break my concentration. As if I had any of that to begin with. Yeah. That perspective is broken. Eh. All right. I need to make sure that it does not look like like weapon ports or anything like that. I'm I'm trying to make this look like uh, uh, you know cuts, plugs, whatever things that have been uh, things that have been cut or disconnected. I guess if I want it to look cut or disconnected. I should make the edges more ragged.
one of the most useful mental tricks to keep in mind. Just things to remember when composing these sorts of things is uh, anything you can do to break a silhouette, uh, whether it's, you know, something pushing around from behind or something, you know, falling off from the front, uh, those things add visual interest, add depth, uh, and just generally make the picture better. I'm going to pull this down so that you can see what it is I'm doing. Part of what I'm doing is uh, repenting of the existing line. See if I can successfully freehand a twist in here. For various definitions of successfully, I'm going to tentatively say yes. And let me grab that. There, do we look round yet? We look like we need to slice this in. Um, oh, is there a spam bot? What's the spam bot? What do I need to click on to kill a spam bot? Um, is that the Click on, oh, click on trusted user and knight them so that they may smite the spam bot. I don't know that I have that button. And I can block, I can report, I can, well, what that means is I could go to this one and I can pull the thing and I can block it. Does that work? Hope that works. You're right, it, it probably won't be back. Uh, it, it has done its thing. I don't think I need that one. I think, yeah, I think I'm just fine with the ones I've got. So Polarin is saying use slash ban airline, you put whatever. Um, I, but then I would have to type, right? But I have to type in order to do that um, because my keyboard being clear over here. It 
it, control C, control V. You're, you know what? Control C, control V is great. That can totally be done without a keyboard. Yes, I can right click and copy and paste and whatever, but. Better? Um, definitely better. Okay. We have been live for an hour and 15 minutes. We've got uh, 30 viewers. Hey, welcome new viewers. We've uh, picked up a few. Um, Questions about what's going on? Uh, join the chat, type, say something, say hello. Um, I'm happy to happy to happy to talk. Far easier for me to talk than for me to type. In terms of process, right now I am still focusing on the foreground elements. Um, the background is going to be absolutely critical to selling this book's vision, theme, uh, uh, heart. Uh, the book is called Big Dumb Objects, and Big Dumb Objects are giant science fiction-y constructs like, you know, ring worlds and Dyson spheres and halos and whatever else. Um, and in order to sell that, I need this space to have fun things going on in it. Uh, cans of sky. That's absolutely right, Karen. Thank you for um, reminding me to self-promote. Uh, the the Esperaran tree needs to fill this uh, uh, this this background, and there might be room, you know, in there for space battley type whatever's um, uh, we'll see um, Polaron recently reread Ringworld yeah um, I I love Niven's work because Larry Niven's uh, world building is what dragged me into science fiction to begin with and so so we'll, we'll always have a, uh, a, a fond place, a fond place in my heart. Um, that said, uh, the characterizations, the, uh, the character dramas, um, uh, he did, he did world building and big ideas much better than he did people. Oh, there I am reaching off panel to draw again. So sorry. Off panel, out of frame. There's, there's words for this.
Hey, uh, question for question for uh, for chat. Um, what kinds of things do you like to watch streamed? Uh, and clearly, you're here, and I'm glad that you're here. Uh, are there things that you really love watching be streamed that are not things that I am doing? Are things that I could be doing? Um, are there things that you just can't imagine me ever doing on a camera, but uh, but in your secret heart of hearts, boy, you would totally tune in for that. What say ye? <laughs> DJ, DJ says, eh, mostly I'm listening to you talk since I'm working myself and and I'm like, oh, oh, I gotta remember to talk. If I, for, if I forget to talk, I, I vanish from from your awareness. Uh, Ekin Orlax asking about uh, the Espies. Um, the Espies were absolutely created for Planet Mercenary before they entered the strip. Absolutely. Um, uh, we had we had a small creature, and now I, I can't remember what the small creature was um, in the in the setting. And Alan's wife, Erin, wanted another small thing, um, preferably something even smaller. Um, and Esperaren is extra a something small SS per Aaron. So that is absolutely where the name came from. I hope that doesn't destroy any of the any of the magic for you. Looking, I tend to watch woodworking, video game development, comic style art, very infrequently some games. Um, a potter I follow regularly. Games are mostly people I like supporting and or are friends. Okay, so when you say people you like supporting, so watching a speedrunner who you don't know wouldn't be all that interesting to you, but watching, say someone you already follow for other reasons play games would be interesting. Paul Aaron says, I love it, but that's almost as bad as my name. Is that uh, because you are an Aaron who skates pole position? Uh... I, I know you skate. I, I saw your Twitter and it had it had roller derby things in it, which is a thing that I find fascinating and horrifying. Not that I'm afraid for you. I just the idea of putting on wheels and then letting other people touch me. <laughs> Ah, Paul is a prefix from the Belgariad. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense.
Is that working? Is that cable twist working? I'm not actually asking you. I mean, I can't kind of am asking you. I'm mostly just asking because, whoa, it's, I think the problem is that there's too much negative space under it and it wanted to curve. Yeah, it wanted to, it wanted to curve further down. So we are going to let it do that. More whiteout for the whiteout, God. Yes, Warhammer fran friends, fans, friends who are fans of Warhammer, that is, that is a more blood for the blood god uh, nod. Wide out, wide out. Oh, how much I love the... Better? Much better. Much better. Okay. How are we doing on time? Woo! Hour and 26 minutes. Um... <laughs> this, by the way, this is where the business of working left to right makes way more sense than working right to left. Because right now, I need to paint over that, and the place where I want to put my hand is where I just inked right over some white out. And if I do that, boy, it will smear like... It will smear like something smeary. I'm not going to use a uh, political metaphor because that would be, uh, that would be low-hanging fruit, but so much smearing. In fact, now that I'm looking at this, it looks like it needs a little white out itself. Okay. How are we doing? How are we doing? You don't know the answer to that question. I can tell already that I have a massive perspective line problem, and I don't think I can afford to fix it in post. That line connects nicely to that curve. This line is way out of whack. So... Whew! Way out of whack. All right, let's pencil in the fix. Pencil in the fix and see what it does. Well, it would require these to be smaller. There goes another chunk of pencil lead. These to be smaller. And... Nope. Connecting it to the back is the wrong answer. What I need to do is follow... Uh, I need a longer stick. Yes, yes, yes. I could go get a proper ruler, but where's my vanishing point? It might be somewhere in Chizulo's, Chizulo, in Landon's elbow. Let's see if I guessed well. I guessed reasonably well. Vanishing point is actually closer to his butt. Vanishing point is behind his butt. This is one of those moments that in any field I would refer to as pure craft. It is not about the 
Oh, damn, I actually eyeballed that reasonably well. But the back of the thing is broken too. Really? Really, Howard? Man. Man. It's a good thing I'm already getting paid because I suck at this. Um, why? See, that, that looks right, but I guess if you're telling me that that's where the curve needs to be, then that's where the curve needs to be. Anyway, falling back on pure craft. Um, art, you eyeball things, and it comes from the soul, and blah, blah, whatever, fluffy, blah. Um, craft is breaking out the breaking out the slide rule and the straight edge and and making a cabinet and what i am doing here is saying that you know the the artsy fartsy part isn't looking right because i need to get out a straight edge and I need to fix the lines. So here we are with the straight edge, fixing the lines. I hope this moment has given the budding artists in the audience uh, great hope for their for their futures because wow if a guy can get paid for 20 years making a comic strip and he still screws up perspective on what is essentially a cylinder. Um, well, maybe we can make a living at this after all. Maybe, maybe we really are good enough to do this. All right, does that look better? Uh, looks a little better. It's um, uh, breaking the rules of how the perspective works uh, is is not always bad. Sometimes it it forces a bit of uh, uh, it's not curvilinear perspective, but some of the uh, some of the sense, some of the emotion of uh, of those kinds of perspectives. Um, Yes, I'm totally just freehanding that without looking at any of the lines I drew. It means it's almost certainly going to be crap. But so lazy. So lazy. I would have to get out a straight edge again. Why get out a straight edge when I have a pen full of white paint right here? Okay, let's see if there's stuff going on in chat. Majority of what? Nay, isn't the bottom line obscured by Tagon's arm? Um, the bottom line is obscured by Gon's arm a little bit, yeah. Um, uh, what are we doing? Is that where I want that? Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, and you. You are not round enough yet. Oh, that'll do. That'll do. Okay, we've made uh, we've made a reasonable amount of progress in the last uh, ninety minutes. Hand is getting a little tired. Let's see if I can. finish up the line weight on these foreground bits. It's 
sort of a three-toed chicken foot here. What was I thinking? It's going to need to be whited out as well. Any other questions as we wrap up? That whiteout pen seems magical. Um, what kind of paint is it in the whiteout pen? Well, um, it's written in a language that I don't speak. Um, Uni is the brand name. Posca is the pen. I think it is similar to a gouache. Um, but that's all I got for you. Sorry. But it is not white out. It is, uh, it is, it, it is much more like a, uh, like a white paint. She had it right there in my hand and didn't take care of the lines that needed to be taken care of. I tried using a gel pen. And uh, and I think the gel pens may have also been from Uni, um, and they just did not put out enough white paint. I need to finish that sentence. That sentence came out weird. Um, Okay, how's it going? Is that starting to starting to look like uh, starting to look like cover art? Um, asking if it's a liner pen. This liner pen model model kits. Um, uh, I don't actually have any liner pens that were made for model kits, um, but yeah, they're they're probably similar. Um, these these pens are uh, uh, Stettler pigment liners, um, commonly used, I think, by architects, you know, drafting tool type people. Um, boy, I really want to get in there and, and do Chisulo. I also want to fix some of these lines. say ye should should I should I try the elephant should I muscle through my exhaustion and attempt fine line work on a itty bitty ginormous elephant do hand stretches first he says he says damn it cad I, I'm not that's not me cursing that's the name right there in chat is damn it cad or yeah what has the outcome been for you when you muscle through I have uh, mixed results um, it really depends it really depends on how tired I am um, the tired that I am right now is uh, uh, yeah, I'm not yet to the point of bad decision tired. Um, I'm, uh, well, bad decision. I'm not going to stretch my wrists. Um, <laughs> uh, when I'm working on the comic, I've found that sometimes when I am too tired, I will, uh, 
I will make lazy art decisions because I just want to be done and I'm pushing through so I can be done. And that is, uh, that is too tired to continue working effectively. Um, and I've, I've learned to recognize, I've learned to recognize that. Okay, how much of Chizulo's armor am I going to put on Chizulo? I think a little. Yeah, I'm totally freehanding that. And I might be getting away with it too. Oh, I did the wrong thing with his hand. Oops. Because I need that tail dropping over the edge. said I wasn't going to put Chizulo's eyes in there. We're getting Chizulo's eyes in there. And this flash is going to be covering a whole bunch of his body. Um, oh, chat seems to have dried up a little bit. Uh, what do we have for what do we have for questions? What's uh, what's on your mind? I'm I'm about to wrap up. Probably the next ten minutes here, I'll I'll be finished. Anything you want me to talk about before that point?
what should I eat for dinner? Um, go for something that doesn't have a whole lot of sugar in it. Not because I'm anti-sugar. Oh, stream hiccups? Are we having uh, are we having glitches? Yeah. Um, oh, question is, uh, what angle is the table at? Um, well, the table is definitely definitely at an angle. Um, uh, it's like about about this. Is that, is that show it to you? I mean, I suppose I could reach out and pick up the webcam and aim it around my office, but uh, that way lies madness. Um, I angle it because if it were flat, I would be bent all the way over while I'm working. This, this allows me to sit back and work. I still lean forward uh, to do a lot of things, but... Um, Well, it sounds like the crew that is over uh, painting the uh, the apartment that Kelliana is going to be moving into has returned to the house. So background noise is going to get kind of crazy. So now is probably a good time for me to stop. You walked right into the room, heard me talking about noise, and decided to knock your ruler over. High five. We're gonna be starting Monster Hunter. So noise level is gonna increase exponentially as we die. Right, right, right. Hey, everybody, thank you for watching. This has been Howard Taylor's Drafting Table, Big Dumb Cover Art 3. And let's put a magnet in that so it holds still while I, uh, let's put it someplace where, because, See, the, the final frame, I can make the final frame all pretty. Um, and yes, isn't this spaceship amazing? Jeff Zagal did fantastic work on that. Uh, thank, you for, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me. And this will be up live on YouTube probably tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.